Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Alan Said. I'm the head of education at the Department of Applied IT at the University of Gothenburg. And I will talk about uh, our education in human-centered AI. Uh, yeah, so let's start. Uh, just to give you a short introduction, the Department of Applied IT is a uh, quite unique department in the Swedish university landscape. It's a it's a department. Uh, it's a multidisciplinary department that foc that focuses on the digitalization of society. Uh, and uh, in the last one, two, three years, uh, we've started an effort in research and education on human aspects of AI. Uh, and you might want to know then what are human aspects of AI? Well, uh, there's been a lot of buzz around this human human centered AI uh, topic in the last few years. Uh, among others, uh, let's see, uh, OECD published a report uh, two years ago, I think on the impact of artificial intelligence on the labor market. Uh, so trying to figure out where AI is heading in terms of the uh, the job market. And a few things that they identified, I'm just gonna give, give like a very brief overview here. I'm not gonna go, go into the details, but a few things that they identified was that, uh, you know, that there is an AI transition and that the AI, AI will have a, an impact on the creation of job tasks and job roles. And it will sort of change the way a lot of the job market is organized. And this was from OECD. There's been a similar report from the White House uh, doing an analysis of how AI impacts workforces in the EU and in the US. And similarly to the OECD, they found that you know, there's uh, there will be new tasks. Uh, there will be new ways of working, uh, both in blue collar and white collar uh, jobs. And us being a university, we're focusing on the white collar workforce. So this is sort of the scope of the human centric AI uh, that that we talk about, like what new job tasks work uh, there will exist in the future uh, on the horizon. Uh, and obviously, there is a huge need for education in AI. And if we look at the current AI education landscape in Sweden, there's plenty of like higher education uh, courses, programs, both on basic level and advanced level in AI, in machine learning, in data science. But one thing that the, all of these uh, educations sort of focus on is the technical aspects of it. So if you look at the, uh, the program from Linköping University, specifically states that, you know, they integrate statistical modeling, they use machine learning and so on. And if we look at uh, Chalmers, similarly, they talk about, you know, machine learning, they talk about neural networks. So like very core technologies, more on the software engineering or AI engineering aspects of it, and less so on the human aspects. And similarly for Lund University, it's about control theory, machine learning systems control. If we look at Europe in general, um, things are a bit different. We see like we see that there are initiatives taking human aspects or so human-centered aspects of AI into consideration. So, for instance, at Elisava in Spain, there is this master's in human intera human interaction and artificial intelligence. Super relevant, super interesting. Also a bit less technical. Uh, there's a, a master's in Swansea in Wales uh, on human-centered big data and AI, um, which which has a few of these human-centered aspects, but more on the big data uh, things. And at DTU in Copenhagen, there's a there's a master's uh, which is called human-centered AI, just like ours. But if you look at the fine print, it says that the education pre previously held the title digital media engineering. So it is more on the technical aspects of AI. So generally, when looking at the sort of AI education landscape in Sweden, in Europe, but also globally, we see a lot of like technical educations where uh, we educate engineers, software developers, the people who will be building sort of the uh, um, 
the, the algorithms of AI, the, the, the underlying technologies. What we want to deliver is an education that focuses more on the use, the human aspects of AI. So like how do people use services that, uh, that use AI or how does AI affect uh, services that we use, right? So looking at um, our take on human-centered AI is we look at, we say that AI creates radically new conditions for individuals and society. And it brings a lot of new possibilities, but also challenges where existing ways of working and understanding and communicating are fundamentally changed. So if you just think of, you know, the hype around ChatGPT in the last six or five months, there's been immense progress and things change, change fundamentally, really. And what we want to look at is how does this sort of, uh, how can we deliver an education in this landscape? So with these pot potentials and problems that AI brings, uh, it will uh, impact leadership and it will demand new ways of planning, structuring and organizing operations, workforce, job market, et cetera. So the purpose of our education is uh, to train the next generation of leaders of people who will be working in AI with AI, but not necessarily developing AI as a technology. These will be people who work with systems driven by AI, but not developing them. So new generations of leaders, administrators, consultants, researchers, and also developers, but then more on the soft side, like the interactive parts of, of it. Uh, because like we need to take care of all of the opportunities that AI brings to, to our job market. So our program prepares students for various roles in technology in management and innovation, but also possibly for further studies. So if you know someone is interested in pursuing a PhD in AI without necessarily having the technical know-how, this would be a, a good program to, to, uh, to, to take since you will get like AI competence uh, more on a generic uh, scale but not the technical one technical scale uh, so we see that the demand for ai related skills is super high right now and it's growing if you look at like linkedin and search for for ai you see so many uh, jobs uh, job ads about that you look even at arbits for me in the end even there you find a lot of jobs where like ai is being becoming a super important um uh, competence also in fields that aren't uh, traditionally uh, haven't traditionally been using AI so you a lot of things in the open uh, in the public sector like health and schools and public or public administration and so on so our uh, master's degree in human-centered AI uh, is starting now in the fall um, and this is a two-year program that's covering core subjects within AI, uh, within ethics, so ethics of AI, within human-computer interaction, how we as humans interact with computers, with AI-driven systems, and so on. Uh, it covers cognition, so like how people understand things, the interactions, the way we, we convey or understand information, and also in information systems. So the, uh, the Swedish, in Swedish, this term is informatik. Uh, so all of these things, um, so how we manage and organize information and information systems. And what's unique with this program is that it is in AI, but it is open to applicants from all fields. If we uh, think back on the slide that I showed for with the uh, master's educations from Chalmers, from Lin Shopping, from Lund, all of them require a bachelor's in computing, in statistics, in mathematics, or something equivalent. Our program is open for anyone with a bachelor's, although in order to be able to deliver um, you know, competence at a sufficiently high level for a master's, there are certain prerequisites. These prerequisites include basic programming skills, uh, an introduction, introductory course in human-computer interaction, and some basic understanding of AI or machine learning. And these are all courses that are available 
uh, at a lot of Swedish universities, ours as well, that you can take online or you can take uh, on campus. So this is like if if someone's coming from a from a background not in, not in computing, these courses are uh, available uh, as a prerequisite, you know, to enroll in this program. The structure of this program is it's a two year masters. Uh, the first year is uh, structured into four courses. Uh, that cover different aspects of AI. So we start with an introduction to human-centered AI, focusing on management, organization, and so on. Then there's a course on interaction design and AI, where we talk about how we interact with AI-driven systems, how we build uh, interaction systems with AI, trying to figure out like how, how can we take everything we know about human-computer interaction and apply it to human-AI interaction. There's many different things that are changing that we need to, where we're looking at cognitive aspects of AI. So how humans think, how AI builds knowledge and so on. A course on ethics, fairness, and accountability in AI, in AI. And this is a topic that is currently super hot. We see a lot of, uh, uh, big organizations uh, searching for for people with uh, you know a AI ethics roles. Um, you look at like uh, large multinationals nowadays have like AI ethicists, AI strategists, and these are people who are not engineers. These are people who have um, like a humanities or so social science background with competence in AI, and this is what we're trying to deliver. In the second year. We have a, a set of electives, um, and these are all courses that are, uh, I mean, we offer them, but these are electives. So students aren't, uh, they don't need to specifically enroll in them. They can pick and choose any other courses they want, or they can go abroad for a semester. And then there's a master's thesis, uh, which is uh, intended to be a, a collaboration between industry or the public sector, where students go and work with um, an organization on these aspects. Um, but what can be said in general is that the first year is sort of the one where we expect students to be in place on campus. So these are all campus courses, right? So that's one year. The second year, because uh, the first semester is mostly electives, students can enroll in at courses anywhere. And the master's thesis is something that can be done anywhere as well. So in general, while this is a two-year master's program, uh, for someone working in the industry, what is relevant here is to think that it's only like one year where, where you need to be in place on campus to uh, to do that to enroll in the education the second year is very flexible the roles that we envision that uh, st that students after graduating from this program can can have is something like ai policy analysts or ai strategists compliance officers or even uh, user researchers in in corporate context or in the you know, public sector uh, and also like close to the academic uh, sector, close to academic research. And if we look at uh, in the last one, two, three years, there's been a lot of uh, policy, policies and uh, govern, governance documents published by the EU, by uh, various uh, NGOs, by na national organization and international organizations outlining how AI can and should be used. And our, like we believe that this is the type of competencies our students will have in order to be able to work with those types of documents. And so aligning uh, corporate practice with those documents, but also writing those types of documents. So the program, as I said, is a full-time, it's campus-based, and it is two years. Uh, uh, in, but in practice, it's only one year that you need to be on, uh, in place. Um, application is open until April 17th, and the first cohort of students will start now in September of 2023. So this was this will be the first edition of the program. We're looking at enrolling around 20 to 25 students. So this will be a tightly knit group working together with our researchers uh, in close to research. 
And of course, being an international master's program, it is taught in English. So as I said, full-time campus-based uh, two years. And obviously uh, this is quite a commitment, especially from people working in, um, you know, uh, already working. So we have something else as well. Um, we have a, a course on design and AI that is sort of attempting to do a very condensed version of the program, but focusing on very specific aspects. So our uh, course is a bachelor's level course, and this is also open uh, for, uh, for anyone from all fields of study. And it covers AI and machine learning as a design material. So how should we think when we design and work with systems that are AI driven or use AI in some, some aspect? And the course will also cover ethical issues regarding the use of these technologies. So trying to figure out what we can, should, should not do when designing these systems. And there are plenty of examples where there have been AI driven systems that have done very bad things. And what we're trying to convey both in this course and in the master's program is, you know, the reasoning around how we should, how we should work to not have AI do bad decisions and bad systems. So the course is an introduction to designing with AI, A as a tool and A as a part of the design process. It is open to all applicants from all fields. But again, because this is you know, AI, it has certain prerequisites and those prerequisites are programming. So a programming course, uh, seven and a half credits, which can be taken at any university online or, um, or on campus. So this is a full-time distance-based uh, 10-week course on, on a bachelor's level. And applications are open until April uh, 17th. Uh, the course is taught in English and we've had this course twice now and we've had 20 to 30 students enrolling. So it is still a quite uh, tightly knit group working together on common problems and interacting with, with researchers in, in this field. And that sums up my, my presentation of the AI-based education we offer at the Department of Applied IT. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.